Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Logic Medico. Today's interesting topic is auscultation of the abdomen. So before we go to the topic, if you are new to my channel, I request you to kindly subscribe to my channel and press the bell button to get the latest notification of the video which I upload. Okay, auscultation of the abdomen. Let's start with the topic. So objectives for today's presentation is the auscultation of the abdomen. What are the auscultation areas in the abdomen? What is the why? What is the reason for auscultation? Why we have to auscultate and why these areas only? So this is the objectives for these are the objectives for today's presentation. So the patient is explained the procedure is asked to lie down supine. Then before auscultating, we have to inspect that is we have to see the area of the abdomen. Then we have to palpate for any tender areas starting from non tender area that is we have to touch. Then we have to percuss the abdomen and the last step is auscultation. Since today is only the topic of auscultation and directly dealing with the auscultation. Okay, nobody will directly auscultate like this until they did the first three steps that is inspection, palpation and percussion. When the patient is asked to lie supine, he is explained the procedure and the diaphragm of the stethoscope is placed on the abdomen of the patient with gentle pressure of course with the earpiece inside the ear canals of the doctor okay and minimum of three minutes auscultation should be done so let's see the steps the patient is positioned comfortably in supine position what is supine position the face facing upwards okay we will be seeing the roof patient okay that is called supine position and we should ask them to strip until the region of the hips then the stethoscope is used to listen over several areas in the abdomen for several minutes minimum three minutes three to five minutes for the presence of bowel sounds okay the diaphragm of the stethoscope should be used just now i told you and i showed you in the picture also it should be applied on the abdominal wall with firm but gentle pressure so it is often helpful if you have to warm the diaphragm otherwise what happens it's uh, cold so it may cause tickling in the patient so it's better to warm the diaphragm with your own hand before examining the patient then the bowel sounds if at all they are not present you should listen at least for full three minutes before declaring that the bowel sounds are actually in fact absent so just for listening for 30 seconds or less than that you can't declare that the bowel sounds are absent i will tell you why so the auscultation areas in the abdomen mainly it's situated around the umbilicus but it mainly in four quadrants will do upper right lateral quadrant lower right lateral quadrant upper left lower left lateral quadrant like this all around the umbilicus we are going to palpate so bowel sounds will be heard once in every 30 seconds it is normal the gurgling sound like some water is gushing through a pipe now like that you will hear that's a normal bowel sounds okay so this means that the peristalsis is intact and the bowels there is no obstruction in the bowel there is no hole or perforation in the bowel the g8 is normal that's what it means okay if it is increased it means diarrhea is there in the patient okay if it is decreased obviously you think of constipation if it is absent you can think there is an intestinal obstruction and the person will also have an abdominal swelling and other findings of intestinal obstruction the projectile vomiting hmm? and it can rupture and cause peritonitis the obstruction okay so subsequently we will see that so what are these bowel sounds these are the intestinal sounds because the intestinal or all organs so the bowel sounds will echo through the intestinal tubes through the abdomen much like the sound heard passing through the water pipes just now i told you like the water gushing through the pipe like that you will hear the bowel sounds most bowel sounds are normal they simply mean that the g8 is working okay that's what i told you peristalsis will be intact the normal bowel sound consists of clicks and gurgles like that 5 to 30 bowel sounds will come for every minute approximately 5 maximum 30 bowel sounds can be there per every minute occasionally the patient can themselves hear the bowel sounds without the use of any stethoscope that is called as barbigny so it's a loud prolonged gurgle 
without the use of aid of any stethoscope the patient themselves can hear their bowel sounds this happens in malabsorption usually and it's called as bor big b okay bor mod mus okay sorry for the pronunciation now coming to the next level this is for the gat examination is over now auscultation of any bruy or venous hum or any rub so what is this rub we'll see of first hepatic friction rub if at all there is inflammation on the surface of the liver so this inflamed surface will rub across the peritoneum it will cause one rubbing like that one sound will come like that this is splenic friction rub in case of inflammation of the spleen of this area left hypochondrium hepatic friction rub will be seen in the right hypochondriac region next bruy and venous sum so please note the area i will just tell you this epigastric area is there no that's aortic bruy will be heard just 1 cm above this above and lateral to the umbilical area you will see renal artery bruy at the groin fold at the level of midinguinal point you will see iliac artery bruy 4 cm below the level of the midinguinal point you will see femoral artery you will hear femoral artery bruy these are the areas which you have to remember i repeat aortic area epigastric renal artery area that is lumbar region the groin fold midpoint of the groin fold iliac artery bruy 4 cm below that below the meeting one point is the femoral artery bruy then continued with a point where to auscultate the bruy is the next phase of abdominal examination once you are examined for the intestinal movements that is bowel sounds so bruys are swishing sounds heard over the major arteries during the systole or less commonly both during systole and diastole <laughs> like that one sound will be there it's called bruy it's a swishing sound the area over the aorta renal artery iliac artery should be carefully examined for bruy so what is suggest is the great blood vessels the aorta renal artery iliac arteries and all are narrowed down why because of atherosclerosis that's what it suggest okay so bruy will be heard will not be heard in normal uh, thing okay it will be heard only in narrowed down vessels then coming to the rubs they are infrequently found in the abdominal examination i already told you on the liver and spleen and sometimes even on the tumor that is abdominal mass uh, abnormal swelling is there within the abdominal cavity which will be rubbing across the peritoneum that will also can produce a rub okay this i forgot to tell you but liver and spleen i told you the area so bruy or called vascular murmur is an abnormal sound generated by turbulent flow of the blood in an artery due to either a partial obstruction or a localized high rate of blood flow through an unobstructed artery that is rare but obstruction is common atherosclerosis is common that is called bruy now come to the venous hum venous hum is a benign phenomenon okay so what happens at rest 20% of the cardiac output flows to the brain this is just an example via internal carotid artery and vertebral arteries so 20% of the blood out, out of 5.5 liters cardiac output per minute 20% goes to the brain via internal carotid artery and vertebral arteries so that much amount of blood has to gush through the veins right that is through the internal jugular vein so when the blood is flowing through the internal jugular vein back to the heart there is one noise heard that's humming noise heard by the patient themselves that is called as venous hum so this can also happen in the abdomen that vein is called as inferior vena cava previously i have shown the area this area venous sum is more commonly near the umbilical region it can also be in this area epigastric region venous sum okay so auscultation area of the abdomen why you just now heard the four quadrants upper right upper left lower right lower left for the peristalsis to hear the bowel sounds okay and if there is increase in peristalsis more bowel sounds will be there that means diarrhea if there is decrease in peristalsis that is either in constipation or intestinal obstruction also to hear bruy this bruy is you can hear what is this bruy b r u i t it's pronounced as bruy the aortic bruy the renal artery bruy aortic in the epigastric renal artery in the lumbar region renal artery bruy iliac artery bruy in the groin fold in the meeting one point 4 cm below the meeting one at point femoral artery bruy so these bruy suggest 
that the artery has been occluded. Why arteriosclerosis is there? Narrowed artery. So there is turbulent blood flow. Like that one sound you will hear. Then venous sum in the inferior vena cava mainly in the umbilical region. Also you can hear in the epigastric region. That is because of increased venous return which is happening over there. And last but not the least the rub. If there is inflammation of liver, hepatic friction rub you can hear in the right hypochondrium and splenic rub you can hear in the left hypochondrium. This is hepatic friction rub is just inside the midclavicular line, whereas splenic friction rub is just outside the midclavicular left midclavicular line. Okay, you can note these areas. This is important. Okay, so these are the importance of auscultation in the abdominal area if you have any queries kindly comment in the comment section below the videos if you scroll down you get comment section there you can comment like and share this video with your family and friends don't forget to press the thumbs up button and if you are new to my channel kindly subscribe to my channel and press the bell button to get the latest notification of the videos thank you once again for watching my video and learning from it